about checkpoint blockade in non-Hodgkin lymphoma comes mostly from a phase one study that was first presented last year at ASH and has been updated since, where one of the anti-PD-1 inhibitors, nivolumab, was tried across a number of non-Hodgkin lymphoma subtypes. There were earlier studies from several years ago uh, looking at uh, another PD-1 blocker, pitalizumab, and a CTLA-4 blocker, ipilimumab, and non-Hodgkin lymphoma, but the phase one study that was presented last year has the most data to date on, um, on non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And what it showed is that there were responses seen in a variety of histologies with a response rate of 40% follicular lymphoma, 36% in large cell lymphoma, and then some anecdotal responses in T-cell lymphomas, which is uh, also very interesting because it's a very hard disease to treat. So, so those are the results that we've had. There have been a, a number of other studies that have been launched since um, and, and that are going to expand those results, phase two studies in particular in large cell and follicular lymphoma. Uh, and, and what's exciting about it is that we have much to learn in terms of what the subtypes of lymphoma, of non-Hodgkin lymphoma are that respond to checkpoint blockade, how to select them, or how to increase response rate maybe by combining it with other drugs. The biology of the disease is different, and we've known now for several years that Hodgkin lymphoma has a unique uh, genetic abnormality. And what that genetic abnormality does is it increases the expression on the cell surface of the PD-1 ligands, PD-L1 and PD-L2. And so just looking at the biology of the tumor, it seemed like it would be the perfect target for PD-1 blockade because it really seemed like its genetics drove it to depend on this pathway for survival. So that was the basis on which Hodgkin lymphoma was included as separate expansion cohort in the two large phase one studies that were first presented last year, one with nivolumab, one with pembrolizumab, which are two anti-PD-1 monoclonal antibodies. And those results will be updated at the meeting this year, but together enrolled just over 50 patients. And these were, these were young patients with very heavily pretreated Hodgkin lymphoma. Most of them had already gone through autotransplant, had received pribrentuximab, which is to date one of the most active drugs in this disease. So it was a very uh, tough to treat uh, population. And the responses were very promising. So the response rate with nivolumab were 87% and with pembrolizumab of 65%, which are very, very high number in this type of, of highly refractory patient population. And the other thing that's uh, captured uh, so much excitement for us is that the responses appear to be durable. So we now have almost two years of follow-up on the nivolumab study, a year and a half with pembrolizumab, and many of the responses are maintained, which has been one of the features of checkpoint blockade, and again, something that's made this, this particular type of treatment so uh, exciting, is the fact that not only are there responses, but they seem to be maintained with now uh, extended follow-up. So, so the model in Hodgkin lymphoma is, is different, again, because it has a different biology, and, and this biology predicted that it would have a high response rate, which is what we found in the clinical trials. These are some of the early results that we have that are lymphoma-specific. Uh, and they come together with a lot of biology. There have been a lot of people that have been trying to understand the, the basis uh, for immune evasion in lymphoma and how this might be uh, exploited with drugs like PD-1 blockade. There's a lot, uh, lot to do now and a lot going on because uh, this field has, has really taken off, again, both in hematologic malignancies and solid tumors. Everybody uh, is involved in uh, immunotherapy uh, in, in lymphoma and beyond. And so we have a set of uh, very exciting results like the results in Hodgkin and a set of provocative results like the responses found in non-Hodgkin lymphoma. And we have some understanding of the biology, but this understanding is just beginning. We don't really know how to select tumors for response. We don't know what mediates resistance to response and how we can uh, manipulate that. And then we don't know how to combine these drugs. So there's a, a whole universe of possibilities of doing combination trials of checkpoint blockade with other forms of immunotherapy or chemotherapy or other checkpoint blockers, and hoping that that will increase response rates, maybe deepen responses, maybe make them more durable. Uh, and, and in parallel, there's also an effort to move the drug earlier in disease like Hodgkin lymphoma, what's most promising, and thinking about trials in first line and first salvage, et cetera. So there's a, a huge number of trials that are, that are starting or taking shape and which are going to help uh, determine where this field is going. closest one is the uh, result of PD-1 blockade in Hodgkin lymphoma. So
So uh, the nivolumab trial, which I mentioned earlier, uh, led to the breakthrough designation by the FDA for nivolumab in Hodgkin lymphoma. Uh, and there's also um, uh, similar studies with pembrolizumab, which is the other P1 antibodies. And the expectation is that those agents might be, uh, uh, in the near future, available for the treatment of patients with relapse refractory Hodgkin lymphoma. So that's the closest thing in lymphoma to really, I think, commercial use. Obviously, there is no FDA approval. All of these are still off-label uses, but that, I think, is the, is the closest to a commercial approval. This is, this is a little bit, um, without wanting to put too much hyperbole on it, the, the realization of a long-standing dream. Uh, people have been looking for a long time about ways to, not just to attack the tumor, but to make the body's immune response attack the tumor. So, so really to, to enable our own processes uh, to eradicate cancer. Uh, and, uh, and there have been many avenues to doing this, and, and other avenues recently which have been extremely promising, uh, things like CAR T cells or bispecific antibodies. But checkpoint blockade has emerged as a really a, a pillar now in this field with, as I said, paradigm-changing results already in disease like melanoma, lung cancer, renal cell cancer, or some of those drugs are FDA approved. What's really exciting for us now is we're seeing responses in lymphoma, uh, in, in particular disease like Hodgkin lymphoma, where there are very high response rate, durable responses, which make us hope that those agents will have a place in the treatment of those disease. And like I said, there's an exploding field of possibilities of ways to put those uh, drugs into patients or combine those drugs uh, in clinical trials. So that there is a, a huge amount of excitement uh, and, uh, and, and the promise, I think, of what it could do is, uh, is extremely vast. Mm -hmm.